and welcome to this edition of Environment. We're here at the Chanville Forest, just outside of Paris, a place where people come to get away from the noise, stress and pollution of the city. Spending a night in the trees, an energetic getaway, as you have to make your own bed among the branches, and to do that you have to climb on up there, as these two girls behind me are starting to do. In this show we'll be looking at the importance of the tree, they need CO2 to grow, sucking in the principal greenhouse gas, forests then are a natural defence against climate change. But they're not always respected, and we'll be taking a look at the most expensive environmental lawsuit ever. 30,000 Ecuadorians are bringing Chevron to court over an oil spill in the Amazon. All this and more, but first, some other news in brief. Mismanaged resources and a spike in food prices are being blamed for rising famine across the globe. According to a UN report, the number of people going without food has grown by around 4 million a week since the start of the year, bringing the total number of chronically hungry people to more than a billion. Africa is the worst affected continent, with 32% of its population affected by the food crisis. Here in France, authorities are attempting to clamp down on billboard advertising. They want better regulation of these signs, which they say are an eyesore in towns and villages across the country. Under the proposals, billboard advertising would be restricted to commercial zones. And in Nicaragua, an active volcano has proved an unexpected hit with extreme sports enthusiasts. Devotees say that surfing down the steep slopes is an ideal way to combine a love of nature with an unbeatable adrenaline rush. The Central American volcano last erupted 10 years ago in 1999. Well, we're here to profit from the countryside, but also to talk about the importance of trees. Deforestation accounts for one-fifth of the world's greenhouse gases, and yet every year around 30 acres of forest are destroyed. That's about the size of Bangladesh. The Kyoto Protocol didn't allow for carbon trading to governments who wanted to pay poorer countries to keep their forests intact, but this could change in Copenhagen in December. The future of our planet's being played out here. Tropical forests cover an area that measures 15 times the size of France. The trees here are 60 metres tall. These immense green spaces absorb 1 billion tonnes of carbon dioxide a year. They help to prevent global warming, but they are at risk. Rising temperatures are damaging this fragile ecosystem. During particularly dry years, we've noticed that trees stop absorbing carbon dioxide. So that gives you an idea of what could happen in the future. Normally, CO2 is absorbed by leaves. Trees use it to grow and stock up on it. Adult trees could hold about a ton of CO2. But in times of drought, the leaves drop off and the tree can't absorb any more. The tree dies and re-releases the gas into the air. This forest land in eastern France is being monitored from these towers. If droughts become more frequent and intense, trees will absorb less CO2. A hectare of forest land could go from holding four tonnes of CO2 a year to only holding three or even two. But levels probably won't drop as low as zero. Maybe forests will disappear. Some experts are warning of a possible catastrophe. Forest fires are becoming more frequent and pests more prevalent. This is leading to changes in species. Forests could end up adding to global warming rather than helping to prevent it. In France, the ecosystem is expected to change. Pine forests that normally grow in drier regions in the southwest could spread right up towards Paris and scrubland in the south to central France. We've never seen entire forests disappear due to climatic change. Why? Well, because normally there are several species in a forest and the trees are genetically diverse, so they manage to adapt to external factors. We must act now. Faced with a potential ecological crisis, Prince Charles, William, his sons, Harry, Robin, and a host of other celebrities have voiced their support on the internet for a campaign to save our forests. To Ecuador now, where Chevron is being sued for $27 billion, accused of dumping oil in the Amazon. The oil giant admits that pollution was caused, but is washing its hands of the affair. Ecuador's Amazonian rainforest. 
From here, it might look untouched, but indigenous Ecuadorians say that when the oil company Texaco operated here from 1972 to 1992, it dumped billions of barrels of oil and waste throughout this once pristine terrain. See, all of this is petroleum. Donald Moncayo is an activist with the Amazon Defense Front. He says Texaco showed no regard for the land. They got rid of some 20 billion barrels of oil-laden waste the easy way. They buried it. These pools were built without any of the necessary precautions. They did not use any protective film or lining, absolutely nothing. They just buried the oil and covered it with earth. Texaco was bought out by Chevron in 2002. That company is now fighting a $27 billion cleanup bill. Chevron admits that the areas where Texaco operated are polluted. But it says an agreement Texaco made with the Ecuadorian government in 1998 absolves it of all responsibility. As part of the agreement, Texaco paid out $40 million. There are environmental problems in the region. We're not denying that. But those environmental problems are the responsibility of the Ecuadorian state because, you know, we, we did our part, Texaco did its part. But a lawyer working with the people of the region to sue Chevron says Texaco didn't do enough. The problem is the cleanup job was left incomplete. For the past 40 years, the chemicals weren't contained in these waste pools. They've been leaking out of the pools and running into the rainforest. An initial verdict on the lawsuit is expected in the autumn. In the meantime, residents living near polluted areas claim that cancer, miscarriages and skin disorders are plaguing their communities. They say $20 billion might sound like a lot, but it won't pay for what they've lost. And after all that talk about the good forests can do for our atmosphere, there's also the products we make from wood. Floors, chairs, tables, you name it. You don't have to renounce on them, but you can purchase your planks with the environment in mind. From teak to mahogany, exotic wood is all over DIY and furniture stores in the Northern Hemisphere. But these are species that are often over-harvested, and forests aren't protected for the use of local populations. On, um Hunting, fishing and fruit picking have all disappeared. People are a little unhappy. No, not a little, people are unhappy. They can no longer live like they used to. Rather than splurging on the exotic, it's best to rely on homegrown timber. Consumers in France should go for hardwoods like chestnut or oak for outdoor furniture or flooring, for indoor furniture, stairs or skirting, pine, fir or cherry are more suitable. It's important to do research before buying and find out where the wood came from and if the farm is sustainably run. Look out for the international FSC label. It's a guarantee that the wood comes from a well-managed forest. So there you have it, Noemi now has her bed ready for the night, but that's where we're going to have to leave it for this edition. I hope you enjoyed and found it useful. Do send any of your questions or comments to environment at fonsvenket.com. See you next time.